Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. For some reason, people just keep watching these stupid freaking things. Once again, welcome back to Stupid Pedal Tricks with your host, Pink Jimmy Photon, representing the 06118, whatever the hell that means. I'm an old guy, leave me alone. Anyway, today's attractive little device is uh, a long time ago, Runoff Groove put out uh, a do-it-yourself thing for a little chip amp called a Ruby. It had a JFET and an LM386 power in it. They sound great. They're just not real super loud. I like things a little bit more loud, a little bit more, you know, raucous and bad and evil and you know, stuff where you hear your dog talking backwards and, you know, uh, you know, Satan's possessing your dog or whatever. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of weird shit I see on TV these days. People will believe God can't hear anything if you tell them enough that, you know, things are alternative facts. But uh, anyways, I went and decided, okay, cool. Well, I was dicking around putting together this stupid little miniature overdrive thing, little one transistor dealio that I was messing with. And it sounded really good put together on the breadboard with the little Ruby. And I was like, this is cool. I had added some clipping diodes, and I got like a really loud, crunchy kind of, you know, very fuzzy when the guitar's up all the way kind of guitar sound. I mean, you could definitely put an uh, input volume control on the circuit if you wanted to, like, to trim in how much distortion you're going to end up getting. But uh, I kind of like the way that this little overdrive thing works. And uh, anyways, I couldn't get the son of a bitch to work. And I scratched multiple places trying to figure out what was what. And uh, just looked real hard at it, and I realized that since I had signal up to the, uh, the, the drain of the JFET, which was on the bottom, I think, gate source, I can't remember, but I couldn't get any signal through the JFET, so I just took the damn JFET right off the freaking thing, hot-wired around it so that I could get the thing working. Got it working at that stage on a piece of Vero. Because, as usual, I'm too lazy and lame to go and actually build it on a freaking breadboard by itself before committing it to Vero. And, uh, I got the thing working. I tried a whole bunch of different transistors with it. Uh, ended up settling on a BC547. Although, uh, 2N5088 sounded good. 2N3906 sounded good, 2N4401, 2N222. Um, some of the transistors, if you reverse beta them, you get this like metal monster machine kind of super distorted, hyper saturated, fuzzier, beastie kind of sound, which is kind of cool. I didn't actually opt for that because I'm an old guy now. But uh, the 5088 worked good, the, the BC547 worked good. Um, I tried a couple of other things in it too. I mean, MPSA 13, MPSA 18. You know, I also tried some germaniums. I wasn't really paying attention to numbers. I have just like a box full of like NPN ones and a box full of PNP ones, and I just grabbed a couple out of the NPN one and tried them. It sounded good. I, you know, put sockets in and just plug in freaking transistors until you're happy. But anyways, I decided for no apparent reason to uh, make the box here, which, if I can get it so you can see it, is the Ruby Doobie Model 1. Ooh. It's using A. I'm going to turn off the power for a second so that the light goes out. Uh, there's pictures I'll put up on DIY and Freestop. Do it yourself, snotboxes.com and freestopboxes.com. I'll try and link them here in the, in the uh, notes underneath or whatever. But basically, and of course, give props to my boy Lawrence Scaduto, who's looking out for you. All right. Anyways. So, anyways, I call it the Ruby Doobie. It's a cross between a uh, regular cheesy ass 
like bog standard LM386 chip amp and my own stupid little overdrive thing, you know. Um, but anyways, it actually sounds surprisingly good. The way that it works is you have bias. Let's see if I can get it where you can see. I'll put the light out with my finger. The cord's kind of short, so it's hard for me to get at it. Okay. You've got bias. And what bias does is it's literally just biases the uh, transistor overdrive. To the left, it's kind of cleanish. All the way to the left, it start, it's kind of clipping because it's running out of like where it needs to be to run. Uh, to the right, it starts to brown it out and dry, you know, like just dry it up all the electricity so it just starts to get fuzzy and fitzy and nasty kind of sound and then crackly and shitty and all them other fuzzy look good things that weirdos like me like. Next up, you got your game. This is the uh, game control for the 386 chip itself. And it, it's set up where it's uh, limited slightly at both ranges of the pot. But it lets you go and definitely boost. It's like an overdrive, kind of. Figure, uh, this is your overdrive pedal. This is the drive channel of your amp. And then this is your volume here. Between the three of you, you can get like a ridiculously like stupid number of sounds. You're not going to, with the knobs themselves on the amps, if you have your guitar on 10, I'm going to tell you flat out, you're not going to get a, a clean sound out of this thing, and you're not going to be happy with it. But, if you turn your guitar knobs down about halfway, or, like I said, add the input gain, I'd recommend, like, probably one meg going just in line between the input of your guitar and the input of the circuit. One make it work, 500K, whatever, 250K. Just, you know, make it kind of high so you don't lose too much of your high end because these kind of circuits can get kind of muddy. Um, but anyways, uh, it's like you can really dial in a lot of different sounds from the pedal or the guitar. So I'm going to kind of try and focus this on the, on the pedal so you guys can see it. I got my trusty Stratocaster thing here. Try not to pull this off I'm down in my basement in the dungeon of doom. What you're hearing for a speaker cabinet is an old uh, 212 checkmate cabinet. It's a fake custom tuck and roll. One of them silicon and FET transistor deluxe amplifiers. But I'm just using the speakers from it. Right now the uh, balls or volume is set all the way up. Stratocaster's on its deck pickup. I got the bias about halfway up and the gain's all the way down. Deck pickup, I put on the bass. It was a guitar cranked up. Turn it down. So I'm going to play with the bias a little bit. And turn the volume down a little bit. This is the bias all the way to the left. Just a little bit of crunch with the guitar tone. This is the max of the. You turn it down. Gated, nasty. The gain control makes it louder and have a little more bass.
it down a little bit. Never gets completely clean. I'm gonna starve a bit more. Starve it all the way. With the guitar up. down so This is a sentient machine by Parasite Studios that I just recently built. I'm going to patch this in. She so is going to hear it with the combination. It can get really watery sounding and kind of cool. Of course. I gotta make sure I got them both plugged in. And that's a bad chord there, that green one. But it'll work for my purposes for the moment. All right. Apparently not. Okay, pedal failure, pedal failure, operator error, pedal failure. Works better if you plug the guitar into the input than backwards. what it's all.
I'm betting it's the goddamn cord. Cool noises, huh? There we go. sounds like. With the guitar all the way up on a humbucker. Here's a single coil. Roll the back a little with single coil. Thank you. 
junk pile, plug this back in. Thank you. 
When you got the uh, gain and the volume correct on it, there's always a certain amount of inherent distortion that's going to be there. I kind of like it. I'm a little weird, kind of deviant that way. It is what it is. But my God, this has been going far too long with me wanking down here. I got to go, man. I'm going to go play tonight with my brother, and I'm going to give him this particular uh, amplifier for his birthday that was last week. I was going to have it for him last week, but I fucked it up. Hey, shit happens. Anyways, uh, once again, as always, uh, pay it forward, buy a bum a cup of coffee, do what it takes to make America really great again, you know, throw your hat in the ring and put your hand out to your neighbors and people that need help and assistance and, you know, help them out because someday you might need help and assistance or somebody you care about, you know, so just uh, whatever I make is always free. I mean, unless I build it for you, you know, so just pay it forward somehow, you know, because that's how you make America great. We all look out for each other. We all take care of each other. Peace.